The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. When the time arrived for Elizabeth to have her child, she gave birth to her son. Her neighbors and relatives heard that the Lord had shown his great mercy toward her, and they rejoiced with her. When they came on the eighth day to circumcise the child, they were going to call him Zechariah after his father, but his mother said in reply, No, he will be called John. But they answered her, There is no one among your relatives who has this name. So they made signs, asking his father what he wished him to be called. He asked for a tablet and wrote, John is his name. And all were amazed. Immediately, his mouth was opened, his tongue freed, and he spoke blessing, blessing God. Then fear came upon all their neighbors, and all these matters were discussed throughout the hill country of Judea. All who heard these things took them to heart, saying, What then will this child be? For surely the hand of the Lord was with him. The child grew and became strong in spirit, and he was in the desert until the day of his manifestation to Israel. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Today is the feast of the patron saint of our greeters ministry. And Saint John the Baptist was chosen as their patron because Saint John the Baptist was the one who prepared the people through faith and repentance, believe, repent and believe, to meet Jesus, to receive Jesus. That's why in the church, symbolically, um, our greeters ministry welcome the people, set them in their proper places, lead them to their place, so that they may be disposed to worship the Lord and to receive the word and to receive the body of Christ. So they are like St. John, so to say, leading people to their place, helping them prepare themselves for the special encounter and meeting with the Lord in prayer and in Holy Communion. Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. That's why we bless them and uh, we appreciate their work most especially during COVID times, the work is more necessary and relevant and important because of the demands of health protocols in the church whenever we enter and come to worship the Lord. St. John also, the Baptist, is considered as the patron of those who are seeking humility. And everybody seeks humility, the virtue of humility, because that's the foundational virtue. More fundamental than love. More fundamental than love. If love is the trunk of the tree, humility is the soil in which the tree from which the tree grows. If there's no soil of humility, other virtues will not grow, will not bear fruit in good actions and in faith. That's why we need the soil, humus, humanity, humus, soil, the soil of humility in our spirituality. Therefore, I will talk about not so much of John, but he said, I must decrease so that Christ may increase. So that's the sign of humility. Um, what's the sign of, uh, what's the contrast between being humble and being, being arrogant? 
Um, I found an article here. There's a comparison between humility and arrogance. Humility accepts possibility of being wrong. Arrogance insists that they are always right. Humility is courteous and respectful. Arrogance is disdainful of others. Humility is tolerant, while the opposite is self-righteous. Humility is, has quiet confidence. Arrogance has loud bravado. Humility equals gratitude. Arrogance equals entitlement. That's why there are four important phrases, practical phrases, that we need to uh, allow to govern our life. Please help me. If you're humble, you will always say, please. If you're not humble, you say, do this, do that. Next, I'm sorry. If you're humble, you accept. your uh, faults. If you are proud, you don't accept your fault. It's a taboo to say sorry. That's why a Catholic before God can always express his humility by confessing his sins. That's why confession is not only cleansing. It's also a development of virtue of humility in us. I'm sorry, Lord. You are right, I am wrong. Next is, thank you. Thank you. Not entitlement, but gratitude. Thank you. I'm sorry. Help me. Thank you. What else? I, I forgot the other one. The four important words. Well, it's, it's, you research it. But the four important phrase that we need to utter in our day-to-day -day life are act phrases are actually manifestations and expressions of humility. Uh, ang isagali appreciation. You're lovely. You're good. Affirmation. And humble people will never affirm because affirming other people means reduction of their honor, personal honor. That's why these four phrases, very simple, very practical, are actually criteria upon which we base our growth in humility, the presence or absence of humility in our soul. Now apply that sa atong relasyon sa Dios. Do we say, please help me? I'm sorry for my sins. Thank you, Lord. Or do we say, you are my God. I praise you. I appreciate you. Glory to God in the highest. Those who do not believe in Him, like atheists, they do not say glory to God in the highest. Because the center of their life is not God, but themselves. And they create their own world without inviting God to intervene and to help them. So we ask St. John the Baptist to intercede for us not only for our material needs, but also for our spiritual growth. Most especially that the soil of humility will be fertile enough for us to grow in other virtues. Amen. O oh God, our refuge and our strength, hear the prayers of your church. For you yourself are the, are, are the source of all devotion. And grant, we pray, that what we ask in faith we may truly obtain through Christ our Lord. Amen.